<laughs> I think it's working. I got myself a new miter saw. And by new, I mean old beat up piece of junk that somebody else didn't want. While fixing this guy up, I started to wonder, can I make this guy into both a miter saw as well as a cold cut saw? Each manufacturer makes theirs a little bit different. For example, here I've got a belt drive, my old Harbor Freight saw, which is the one that this guy's replacing was closer to a direct drive. There's a gear reduction in there. But there's one thing that is consistent amongst all miter saws that I've seen. They use a universal motor. A universal motor is a good choice for a miter saw. They're really fast, super powerful, and dirt cheap for their size. The problem is they're terrible at speed control, and that's why they don't speed controllers don't come standard on miter saws like this. However, we're gonna try a couple things like that before we do more drastic modifications. The first one I wanna try is controlling the voltage. I don't think that's gonna work, but if I don't show you that, then I'm gonna have a thousand comments from people telling me why didn't I just turn down the voltage. So let's try it and see what happens. First, let's collect some data. The label says that the blade spins at 3600 RPM. That's pretty typical. This guy has a lot of commutator damage though, which is part of one of the things that I'm repairing. I'm basically replacing the motor. But with that in mind, I wanna go ahead and double check while I'm here that the blade is still spinning at 3600 RPM with this setup before I replace anything and also see what the motor speed is and we'll log all that down before we start changing anything. All right, I'd call that 3600. Now we're checking motor speed. Huh. Turns out that the edge of this pulley here is a little bit too reflective, giving me all those weird numbers. So I've added some painter's tape and put the reflective strip on top. Okay, we're gonna call that 17,900. Okay, piece of wood cut with no modifications. Mm. Not bad. Original blade. I don't know how old this blade is. This is the blade that was on it when I bought it. All right, let's look up the transformer. Okay, first up is the auto transformer. Uh, some of you might know it as a Variac, but that's a brand name. From my quick search online, it says that cold cut saws generally run between 22 and 88 RPM, so that's the goal. We got 125 volts approximately coming from the wall. I've dialed that down to 48 volts. All right, it's down to about 1100 RPM, which is still way too fast. All right, we've dialed the voltage down to about 20 volts. Ready? Okay, as you can see, at approximately 20 volts, we don't even have enough power to rotate the blade. And now you can start to see the problem with trying to use voltage control to reduce the speed of a universal motor. The power for any motor is a combination of its torque times its speed. For universal motors, most of that is speed and a very little bit of it is torque. When you turn down the voltage, you are basically turning down the total power, which is reducing both the torque, which you don't have much to begin with, and also the speed. In our case, we had to turn the voltage down so much that we didn't even have enough torque to rotate the blade. We're certainly not gonna cut any steel, let alone even cut a piece of wood. We can't get the blade to rotate. We're not totally out of options though. The universal motor will run on both AC and DC. And I happen to have a shop built lathe that I'm controlling with a DC speed controller. This is my motor and speed controller, which I have so gracefully gutted from my lathe. We're gonna use this dial to adjust the speed. And we'll see here in a moment if we can use this uh, KB Electronics speed controller to control my miter saw. All right, test one, turn it all the way up. We should have full power and speed. All right, so it's about 100 RPM slower. I'd say the performance is the same. I'm gonna turn that to 50%. That was 3200 RPM. Let's turn that down to about 20% about 500 RPM. All right, that's the lowest speed I can set it to. 
which with this combination is still over 200 RPM. Basically, we got two options. If we're gonna keep this motor, we can try to change the pulley ratio, but we'd need something like, I don't know, 70 to one. If we're going from 3600 down to 50 RPM, it'll be close to that. That's not realistic, I don't think, uh, getting pulleys that different in size to fit in this setup. Uh, related to that would be the same thing with gears. If you could somehow get a gear in there, a gear reduction, a worm drive or something, that would give you 70 to one. But uh, again, I don't think that's practical in this application. The second option would be to change the motor entirely. If we take this motor off and put a three-phase induction motor on, which I have several options available, and control the speed with a VFD, now I can get the full torque of the motor at any speed that I want. And that, my friends, is how you're able to cut steel even at just 22 RPM. So now we get to the fun part, tearing this guy apart so that we can mount our induction motor on. Okay, I think I have a plan. At first I thought this might be as simple as making an adapter plate and then putting the new motor in the same spot as the original. But after making a sketch in SOLIDWORKS and putting the two hole patterns on top of each other, you can see that the one horsepower motor that I want to put here is considerably larger. I'd like to be able to put the original motor back in place, so we're going to leave this side unmodified. I'll make an adapter plate that fits here with an additional hole pattern that allows me to mount my new motor on the opposite side. And then it's pretty easy to reverse by just taking the bolts out and putting the old motor back in. Before I cut out any steel, and when it makes sense to do so, I always make a template like this and just double check that the holes actually line up the way I think I did, you know, that I took good measurements and that I don't have any interference in the places where I didn't expect. I wasn't thinking about this little foot that sticks out on the other side for putting tension on the belt. It's interfering, so I'm gonna have to put an additional hole here for that. Just things like that that you didn't plan for. So I need to go modify my sketch a little bit and then we can go cut some steel. Before I grind this, I thought I'd take a second to show you how much dross is left on the part. This is an indication that I'm getting much better at getting the, the speed and power correct. Uh, before it was a lot more material dripping over the side uh, or I didn't cut all the way through and so we're starting to get that dialed in. I don't want to get excited too early, but uh, I think it's working. There's a few features I need to add to make this thing totally awesome. Number one, I'm going to cover up the belt because that's just what you're supposed to do, guard those moving parts. And I'm going to add a potentiometer right here in the front. So that'll be a little 3D printed mount that'll be right there. That'll allow me to adjust the speed and then reach up, grab the handle and pull the trigger to start the VFD and the VFD would be in an enclosure to keep metal dust and stuff from getting inside of it. Okay, change of plans. I thought I was gonna have to make a custom piece, but this contour actually has enough of a cavity that, uh, that would allow me to put my potentiometer in this original piece. As you can see, I painted it black one time. I'm just gonna paint it blue now and match everything else. 
So I just need to trim this out to fit this contour. And I think I'll just put the original piece right back in there. I'm liking that. Just a tiny bit too much there. But hey, I can work with that. The motor we're using is a one horsepower, three phase motor. So I'm gonna be using this VFD in order to control the speed. This is the smallest one I have that'll still do the job. It's pretty beat up, but it does work. So I'm gonna wire it up real quick while those pieces are, while the paint's drying on those pieces. And then I'll have to rewire all this once I make the enclosure and everything. I clipped the wires inside of this guy to make everything a little bit neater and just left the wires that are connected to the switch. I've got two coming out of this side and two coming out of this side. And it turns out that these two are normally closed. <whistles> Hear that? When you pull the trigger, the circuit opens. So I'm guessing this side was meant to be connected to the potential laser add-on for this saw. I don't know. But anyway, I want the normally open side there we go. My VFD will let me wire an external switch to turn it on and off. So that's what I'm gonna use these two for. There's one more question I want to answer before I change this blade out and start cutting steel. That is, can I get enough speed range with this motor setup in order to cut both wood and steel by just turning the dial? Now I need to give you some perspective. Normally a motor saw runs at about 3500, 3600 RPM. And the current pulley setup that I have now gives me 800 RPM at 60 hertz, which is what the motor is designed for. However, my VFD will let me adjust the settings from zero all the way up to 400 hertz. So what I've done is I've set it to go from zero to 220 hertz, which will give me about 3000 RPM. You might be wondering, well, Jeremy, why not go all the way to 3600? Here's the problem. After you pass 60 hertz, the motor is not gonna put out any more horsepower than it already has. So the VFD is gonna have to compensate by lowering the torque in order to get the speed up so that you have the same total power output. So once we go past 800 RPM, the torque is gonna to steadily go down as we keep going up in speed. That's why I wanna stop at about 3000 RPM. I feel like that's close enough to the typical speed without sacrificing all of my torque. The blade I have on this saw now only has a few cuts on it. It's got 32 teeth. Speed's turned up to 3000 RPM. Let's give it a shot. Oh. Helps to turn power on. Well, that's promising. With most VFDs, all the parameters are adjustable. So I, right now I've got like a five second deceleration time. That's also adjustable. I can make it stop faster if I want just so you know why I'm waiting so long. I'm gonna try to go a little faster. All right. All right, we got a couple pieces of plywood. I'm gonna go a little bit slower because I think that's what you would normally do. And let's see how it goes. Well, it's not bad. So in terms of cutting wood, I would say that if your primary goal is to cut steel and you just wanna be able to cut a two by four occasionally, this will get you by. But you're definitely gonna need more power if you're looking for production level cuts. I could take this to two horsepower. In fact, I've got a C-Face two horsepower motor with this same bolt pattern right behind me. So I could just change it out. The reason I didn't do that though is because that motor is heavier than this one. And this is already a bit heavy for this setup. I wouldn't want to risk going any heavier than what I've done now 
I don't even know how long this is gonna last. It's mostly an experiment at this point. There we go. What? I couldn't talk about it and not try it. She might be a bit too much. <laughs> At some point, you're gonna notice there are now two motor saws behind me. That's because over the last several months, while I've been sort of filming this in between other projects, I knocked this guy off of my workbench and broke the back of it. I tried epoxying it back on and it didn't stay, so I went ahead and bought another miter saw. Fast forward a little bit more and I realized that the epoxy I had was going bad, so I tried it again, and now this one seems to be holding up pretty well. So for the moment, I have two miter saws. Incidentally, that allows me to also go back and test a few things that I didn't check the first go around, but we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now at two horsepower, 225 hertz, which equates to about 3000 RPM. Let's cut some wood. That's what I'm talking about. All right, now that is good performance. I like that. In fact, we're not even gonna cut any more wood. Let's switch the blade and cut some steel. Earlier I told you cold cut saws operate below 100 RPM, but after doing some more research, I realized that there are several that also operate at 1500 RPM. And that seems to be the variety that we're interested in mimicking their performance. So we're gonna set the saw to 1500 RPM and that also means I need to redo my test earlier with the universal motor. But fortunately, I have a brand new saw, so that removes all the other variables, and I can dial down the speed to try to get 1500 RPM and see if there's enough power to actually cut steel. So that'll be at the very end of the video. Our tube is three inch by three inch by three sixteenths thickness. It's not even warm actually. And the blade feels about like it did before. I don't feel any noticeable increase in heat. So I have a brand new saw blade unused and a relatively new saw, maybe a couple months old. We're gonna rerun the test from earlier to try to get the original motor down to 1500 RPM and let's see if we can cut steel. 60.8 volts is what we have coming into the saw. I've also noticed that it takes a little bit longer for it to get up to speed after I pull the trigger. So I'm gonna wait a few seconds and then push it down. I would prefer not to ruin this blade by trying to force this into the material. As you can see, it's really bogging down. It's just not able to do the job. Now, just for the sake of being thorough, we're also gonna set it up with my DC speed controller and give that a shot as well. You saw this guy earlier, but this is my DC speed controller made by KB Electronics. As I mentioned earlier, universal motors will run on DC. So this will be our final test. Let's see if this speed controller can give us enough torque to cut some steel.
I don't want to disappoint you, but I was really having to push hard down there at the end. All right, let's see if we can finish that cut. You can tell it's struggling. It's warming up, but it's not hot. It's definitely warm. The material's a little bit warmer than the blade. Man, I was pretty surprised. I thought it was gonna cut through for a second, but I don't think it's cutting anymore. All right, I have to admit, that was definitely a surprising result. I didn't think that the controller will be able to cut this far through the steel. So you might actually be able to argue that perhaps I dulled the blade a little bit on this first cut, and then it wasn't able to cut through on the second cut. I don't know. But at this point, I really don't wanna use up any more steel cutting blades testing this. I've already gone through quite a few with a whole bunch of other tests that I've run, but it would have made the video too long, so I just cut all that stuff out. I still don't think that this is the best option, but I'm definitely willing to admit that that was better than I expected. I didn't wanna close this video without giving you one more option, which is a cutoff wheel like this. Uh, these guys are readily available at any big box store, but when you use one of these, the part's gonna be really hot and the edge is gonna be pretty rough. Anyway, the controller kind of surprised me there at the end, so I would love to continue the conversation in the comment section. What do you guys think about the viability of using a DC speed controller? Because that guy is designed to try to compensate for torque as the speed goes down by increasing the current. So anyway, that's a different topic. I don't want to dig in the weeds here at the end of the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this project. Perhaps you'll make some upgrades of your own. The last thing I want to say before I go is thank you to my patrons. I burned through a whole bunch of saw blades, both steel and wood cutting blades, as well as some steel trying to get this project together for you. So a big thank you to the patrons and also thanks for watching.